Hi there, this is Hans Forschner with Navgun Engineering. This is a short uh, introduction video of SoundPlan Essential version 4. I want to highlight some of the changes of version 4.0 and um, give you a little bit of a background. Uh, version 4.0 was released um, to uh, especially time for customers that were using uh, real noise modeling in uh, Europe, uh, so it's including the new uh, German rail standard Schal 03 from 2012. It also includes the uh, Federal uh, FRA, the Federal Rail Administration, and the FTA, Federal Transportation Authority, uh, guidelines or manual implementation that was uh, already included in the SoundPlan version a couple of years ago. Now it's also available in SoundPlan Central. So the um, standards you will find here under the standards and calculation settings. So here we see the FTA FRA model, and then over here is the uh, Schal 03 2012. Now, uh, beside these two standards uh, that uh, again are set up in the editor, so depending on which standards you are selecting, so let me look at this uh, project here, this demo project. So here we have, for example, two rail lines. Uh, this is uh, selecting the FTA FRA model. So if I select that, again, this is a polyline with coordinates x, y, and then here we have z's from the railroad tracks and the ground. And then up here we have the, uh, the direction or the uh, labeling of the train track. And here we have a calculation button, so a little calculator which basically allows us to uh, put in several train types on this track with whatever numbers of trains in the daytime or nighttime hours. We have like three time periods, day, evening, night, then you will see like three periods. And uh, of course here is, we have the speed and in terms of the speed here we'll set it up to 40 kilometers per hour. This is train lengths and here we have the emission levels. These emission levels are the 50 foot levels so here we can already see that uh, from this track we should uh, expect the levels of about 62 to 65 at night at about 50 feet away from the train track. Uh, each of these trains you can also set up one for the max calculation. So if you're doing a max calculation it will uh, look at the, the max level of a pass by of one of those trains. So let's click OK. So here we have again two train tracks and in this case I used one of them to uh, duplicate and uh, made the other train track. So here again we have create parallel objects and then after you, as you have your parallel objects then you can change the input direction by clicking on the coordinate and uh, select changing input direction. All right. Here, input direction, change input direction. All right. Other changes in the editor. Uh, one of the, the the ones that I like personally the most is the change of the 3D map view. So here we have 3D map view, and this now allows us to visualize our geometry. So here we have again our geometry with um, the train tracks, uh, uh, the roads. So berm, uh, forest areas, the buildings with uh, sources on top, area sources on the side of the buildings. And then of course we see the aerial view over the entire area and we see the buildings. Again for all of these objects uh, you can find um, the uh, color coding in the 3D view. So you can change that so instead of gray you can have blue buildings or brown buildings or whatever shade you have in mind. So up here we have a show DGM in, in the 3D view, so we can turn it on, turn it off. So that's one of the controls here in terms of turning that on. And then of course there is another control under the object types um, where we have under the bitmaps, if you select or deactivate the 3D view of the geometry, uh, aerial view on, on top of the geometry. So you can turn that on, turn it off. And the default is always uh, the normal settings here in terms of the additive or normal. Yeah. All right. Um, let me go back to the sitemap. 
a couple other smaller changes that we have here in the editor. Uh, one of them is with Control O, we can uh, activate the object type. So that's a, a quick hotkey that they uh, slotted. So if you want to make changes to the uh, view of the objects, like here mitigation areas, and again here the changes in terms of the color in the 3D view, or in, uh, here again in terms of uh, like buildings, we have buildings. Uh, let's see, right here. So here we have the colors of the buildings in 3D, and then um, we can show that. So here we are now have blue buildings. All right. Um, then another change is if you have text boxes. Yes, we have a text box with um, with control and the left mouse. We can now rotate the text uh, visually on the screen. So yeah, and we can move it again wherever we want to. All right. Other changes are in terms of selecting objects. So if we uh, move out here and we, for example, wanted to select all the buildings in this, uh, in this menu, <clears throat> you can uh, select the building object and then hold the shift key and then with the right mouse drag over all objects. And because the building object was selected, it only selected the building object. So all the other objects are not selected. So if you need to make any changes in terms of deleting them or uh, putting them on the ground and so on, that's easy to do now. Um, another change uh, that was implemented is uh, the change of adding um, receivers. So let me uh, look at these receivers right here on this building. I delete them, first of all. All right. And then this building. Let me select that building. This building <coughs> has a, a street address sat on drive 200. And one of the changes that we have as this object, as this building is selected, we can uh, create receivers at selected buildings. So if I select that, it automatically populates receivers on all the facades of the building. <coughs> now, one of the settings that we have in the um, in the uh, parameter settings, let me check here. In the editor is that the minimum length of the facade for creating receivers is five meters. So the default is one meter, but it, if I, I change it to five meters, that means the facade needs to be at the minimum five meter long to uh, for the program to put a receiver on this uh, on the facades. So like smaller sections like these here will not get a receiver. All right. Other changes, um, of course, emission table. We have now also the railroad, of course, with the road and the source inputs. Result tables. Uh, again, we have the results for all of the contributions and uh, for all the sources, the trains, and so forth. And then we have the graphics. So the graphic plot uh, has changed uh, not significantly. Maybe a few things that are noticeable here. Here we have a uh, scale bar that is in feet. This is only a visualization for the uh, mostly users in North America, uh, in actually the US, that are still like to see uh, a scale bar that is referencing feet. So here by this using this check mark, it's putting a feet scale bar on the on the map. Other changes you will see here right here is uh, the output of contours uh, with a transparency factor. So let me show you that again on the output. So here on the grid noise map we have transparency factors. In this case the, the contours are 50% transparent. If they are less transparent, let's say with 30%, then you see the colors more prominent and uh, you barely see behind what's in the background. So this is probably not uh, good enough, so maybe we'll change it to like a 40% uh, transparency. The uh, check mark right here, bitmap is gray, will basically gray out the, the bitmap in the background. So if it's a colored uh, bitmap, then of course if we take that away, then uh, we'll see other 
color in the background here. So here now it's a little bit more colored. So here we see the color of the different roofs. And uh, of course, if we take that out, all the roofs will turn gray. All right. In this uh, object types, uh, I want to just note here the contour lines. They have a different sequence number. So that sequence number typically is higher than the draw sequence of the contours, which is preferred so that, you, uh, that the lines are on, on top of the contour lines. Um, one other thing that we may decide is use scale colors. And if you have scale colors, then uh, you actually see the colors uh, between the different contours in with whatever scale coloring that we have there. This concludes uh, the uh, overview on uh, Sampling Essential 4. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, post them in the questions on the YouTube link. And um, have a great day. Hi there, just a few additional comments to the release of Sampling Essential version 4.0. Uh, in the editor of uh, the sources, there's one change and that's relating to the frequency spectrum. So if we have any kind of spectral information, uh, version 4.0 now has an expanded frequency range. And so here you can see on the values that the frequency range now is not limited to 31 hertz in octaves, it goes all the way to one hertz. The same in third, uh, in third octaves, so the third octave range is one hertz to 20 kilohertz. So you just change the uh, lower boundary, and then you're getting uh, basically additional fields to put in additional uh, emission data all the way down to 1 hertz. So that is one additional thing here. And uh, a second is that uh, the software also has already a new manual. So you can uh, pull out the, the manual here. So let me uh, I make that small window here. So here you can see the manual is also up to date to the version of 4.0. Thank you for watching and uh, have a good day.